in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a pill capsule and we are going to give them some physics and collisions. If you'd just like to make the model by itself that will be included in this video just go ahead and watch how the model is made. Disregard the animation and simulations. But to start off with we're going to add a sphere and we're just going to grab in the wireframe mode the top part I'm going to drag that up and the bottom part I'm going to drag that down I'm just going off those square grids there. Once we do have that shape, we're going to right click and shape smooth. Next, with Control R, we're going to add some loop cuts. I'm going to add one right there near the center. And then with S, you can scale it up. Now we're doing this in wireframe mode, so when you have your selection, it also selects the back part of the model as well. We're just going to add a few more loop cuts at the top, and we're going to select those lines and scale them in a bit. If you've seen the uh, pill capsules in real life, they kind of have uh, these like dimples because it's one part of the capsule going into the other. Now I thought I made them just a little bit too big so I did go back into uh, wireframe mode and just scale it up just a little bit more because I thought it was a bit too much of a, of a difference there. So now we have the basic shape for the pill capsule. Just want to scale that down a bit because it just looked a bit too big. Now what we want to do with this model is we want to select the two parts to have a multicolored variant. Going into the material tab so we'll add a new. And we'll just set the color through here. Now we're just going to add another material and we're going to set this color to white. We're just going to uh, select the top and click assign. Now you see we did uh, miss a little bit there so what we can do is by alt left clicking we can grab that and just assign it there. Now make sure when you're doing this it is in wireframe mode otherwise you'll see what happened there is the front got selected but the back did not. So back into wireframe, click assign, and it should be all good. Just going to split the window and go into the shader editor. And we're also going to go into shader preview mode just so we can see what the final look will be. Now we're going to bring the roughness pretty much all the way down. And we're going to raise the specular so it does become uh, slightly shiny. So as you can see here, with the specular, it gives that sheen. And we give a slight metallic look too, uh, just so it increases the reflections. Now, of course, if you would like to mess around with the values in the shader, uh, do different colors, completely up to you. Go ahead and play with that to get the look that you want. So that's pretty much it if you just wanted to learn how to model the pill and to get the uh, kind of look and feel of a, of a capsule. Uh, but now we're going to go into the simulation of this animation that we're going to do. So first of all, we're going to add a rigid body we're going to set the mass down to just uh, one gram it's going to be an active type and we're going to change the shape to capsule on the collision so we're going to add a cube into the scene as well as a cylinder we're going to scale that cylinder up and then we're just going to scale it down on the z-axis a bit and we're just going to drag that cube inside of the cylinder and just on face selection, delete the face at the top, so we have an open side to it. Now with the cube selected, we're going to go to top view, and we can just hide the other parts, that's fine. We're going to scale it on the x-axis, just so it gets to the edges, and we can hide whatever we're not using at the moment, and add some loop cuts in here. I did enough loop cuts so there are faces right at the center and they're about the same size as uh, as the cube it's not exactly the same size but that's okay and we're just going to extrude those faces until they reach the edge of that cylinder so now we have this kind of a x pattern or a cross inside of the cylinder now again the pill capsule looked a bit too large so we just scaled it down a little bit uh, if it makes it easier whilst going through things you can rename 
these objects so it's a bit easier to, to work with. So with that initial cube selected, we're going to add in a rigid body. It's going to be a passive and it's going to be animated. And we're just going to go to uh, mesh for the collision. And you see there with the, that rigid body, uh, we accidentally added that to the cylinder. So we're just going to uncheck the animated. Uh, but it's going to be the same thing for the cylinder as well as the uh, cube. With the exception is the cube that we've uh, made modifications to, it's just going to be animated. Okay, so within the render settings, we are going to be using cycles and we're going to be using a GPU. Uh, now, I have a RTX 3090 Ti, uh, so GPU for me is way better than my CPU at the moment. Uh, within the viewport, we're just going to have it on 500 frames with denoising, it just makes it a bit quicker to move around. And the max samples. I set it to 200 there. I believe the final render was a thousand samples, but the time limit was set to uh, 1 minute 20. So no frame would render out longer than 1 minute 20. I believe it never actually reached that with a thousand frames, with a thousand samples. It only ever got to about 1 minute 10 per frame. Now we're going to want some rotation of this kind of stir bar here. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the transform of the cube and we are going to type in hashtag frame divided by 100. And what that will do is if we press play, you'll see it'll start to spin. Now the issue I had with this is it span at a constant rate, which made the render not work as well. So we added this little part here. This math formula allows it to move, stop, go back a little bit and move again. So it's going to be hashtag frame divided by 100 plus 0 0.2 times or the uh, star symbol sin in brackets frame divided by 13. And what that allows it to do is add a bit more chaotic movement within the final animation. So you can see here it goes forwards, stops, goes back, goes forwards, stops, goes back a bit. And that's a continual loop. So that's it done for the animating part of it. We've got the collision set and the stir bar will animate and move. All we need to do now is replicate those pill capsules. So we have a bunch that will uh, fall into there and will get moved around by this stir bar here. Brilliant. So what we want to do here is just grab this pill capsule, move it to one of these corners here, add an array modifier and increase the count. Okay, so we've run into a bit of an issue here because we've already added a capsule collision. When we set the array modifier, it's also arraying that collision. So what we want to do from here is go back into the singular pill and just remove that collision. Once we have removed that collision, we can go ahead and array it. We're going to array the count up until it kind of gets to the side and it doesn't extend beyond that. Then we need to add a separate array modifier that will count it uh, downwards, which will fill out that entire area. And once you've done that, just apply both of those arrays. Now, once we've arrayed those, we need to separate by loose parts, which will separate those into individual objects. A good point at this part would be to make sure you save because we are doing a um, simulation. Blender can be prone to crashing. So once we've got those separated and saved, we're going to select all, go into object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. And now we'll add origin points to all of these uh, singular pill capsules here. Now once we have done that, we can go into the first original pill and give that the rigid body and capsule collision. Uh, we're going to be using the same settings as we did before. Uh, the issue is once you've done that, um, we're going to want to replicate these to, to all of them. And the way we do that, select the original and link them by object data. So after linking the object data, you won't see the capsule collisions at all. In fact, what we need to do is we need to check a setting. So by selecting them all, uh, what we need to do, go up to objects, 
and we go down to rigid body and copy from active and that will copy the capsule collision and the rigid body settings to all of the other pills now it can take a little while to do depending on your PC but once we've got that done then we've got these um, these pills with all the correct settings and now from this point uh, we can duplicate this a few times and it will just add more and more to the scene uh, you can do this as many times as you wish uh, bear in mind the more you do the longer it's going to be to render and now we're just going to find a good camera setting here uh, just to get the correct framing once we've got the camera angle sorted we can go ahead and continue on with the simulation itself okay so we've got the camera sorted so now we want to go ahead and save that simulation as it is um, as it looks good at the moment so we want to save that in order for us to do that we need to bake the simulation so we go into our scene properties go down to rigid body world uh, click on cache we're going to start the simulation at one and we're going to end the simulation at about 500 or 700 or so click bake and that will bake the simulation now again this can depend uh, the speed of the speed of the baking can depend on your your pc um, but it shouldn't take too long and once that's baked you should be able to move around the scene freely and once it is baked again just go ahead and render out your animation you should be good to go any questions or comments leave them down below and i'll be happy to reply see you in the next one